What's going on people, Jason here, and today I'll be showing you how to make a song cover. This is going to be completely unscripted and natural, so unlike my usual audio tech and tutorial videos, I'll be pulling the camera around in kind of a vlog style format to show you my process step by step as I actually carry it out. I'll show you how to get the instrumental from the original song so you can take that into your software, and then I'll show you how to record on top of that and my process of going about things, and then some basic mixing using plugins and my own presets to get something close to a finished industry standard mix. I feel like there's not much else to say to get y'all introduced to what we're doing today, so I'll go ahead and pull the mic and camera and everything back and get some recording going. Three nights at the motel under street lights in the city of Palms. Call me what you want when you want if you want. And you can call me names if you call me up. Feel like the least of all your problems. You can reach me if you want to stay up tonight. Stay up at night. Night green lights in your Let's get our software set up for recording. I'm using Cakewalk, which is a free DAW at the time of filming. Got this software a couple years back and in the time since learning about it, mixing all my music in it and editing voiceovers in it. And at the same time, like promoting it as grade free software, uh, they did decide to make the transition to being paid. Um, but you know, if you happen to get it before the date at which the free download is taken down, then you should be able to use it indefinitely. That's what they're saying at least. I say all that to say, I still use Cakewalk to this day because I like it and I got it for free. And if you can get it for free, then definitely do so as well. And I'll reevaluate things once we find out what the actual price it's going to end up at is. I'm going to speed up the process of getting this project set up for recording by using my own Cakewalk mixing presets. Those are presets for the plugins that go on the vocals. I know we don't have any right now, but we're setting up the project to be able to record. Uh, the link is on screen now to those presets. They're not required by any means and I got a lot of content covering what plugins to use, how to tweak the settings, but this is a really useful resource nonetheless and it gets you up to speed really fast when it comes to building out a vocal chain. Cool, the mixing kit is downloaded and I got the presets unzipped right here. I'm gonna pull over all the plugins that the kit calls for. Deep breath, I might not end up using breath control but we'll see. Two instances of TDR Nova, bop, bop, VX64 for its de -esser. and the second de from the Aero 5 bundle, two compressors, Katonikov, Maltok, Fresh Air, and Ferret TDS. So that's it for the vocal chain. We do need to create three buses, delay, reverb, reverb. So I'm gonna do that over here. Delay. I guess I'll do room reverb, hall reverb. Um, each of these is gonna get one plug in each. That'll be, sign it as delay for the delay. And then both reverb buses get H Reverb Stereo 5.1. It wouldn't really matter too much if the uh, the presets weren't specific to like which H Reverb we're using. You can see there's 5.0, 5.1, long, mono, stereo, a whole bunch. I was confused uh, as to why there's so many when I first got this plugin, but uh, I've consistently used Stereo 5.1 since I got it. So if you get H Reverb, pick whichever one you want, but if you want to use my presets, you're going to have to use uh, Stereo 5.1 just because that's the, the one the presets work with. Um, and then now we can send the vocal track to the delay, the room, and the hall reverb. So there's actually some audio going through all the buses. It's coming through the full FX chain of the vocal track and then getting sent off to the buses. And we can't do anything yet because even though the project is like a, a good skeleton at this point with all the right plugins and the buses and the FX track of the vocal track, uh, there's no settings put in, no presets, nothing. It's just the, the default plugin configuration. So let's go ahead and uh, pull up some information real quick. I'm gonna do Dominic Fike three nights to Met. It's looking like G minor. So we can put that straight into the auto tune. I'm gonna leave Humanize 100, retune speed five, just for the purposes of recording. Let's jump into Nova. Presets, 
from my mixing kit. Second instance of Nova gets the smart high shelf preset. VX64 gets, surprise, surprise, the VX64 preset. Um, Air 5, same deal. Boom. Katelnikov. Boom. Maltok. Fresh air. Um, I, do I have a preset? I do have a preset for this, even though it's two knobs. It's good to have, you know, it's a little faster than turning the knobs. Um, and then this one's got a older interface, but I still got the preset for it. And looking good as far as the vocal chain goes. Uh, let's jump back to the buses real fast. Sonidus delay. These presets are a little different when it comes to importing. Uh, so you have to go to presets, preset manager, import, and then you can uh, select the preset file. You'll click save. And then when you go back to presets under Sonidus FX, you'll find it uh, under the name I saved it as, which is just standard quarter note delay. And this one is dependent on the tempo, which comes from music theory. So back to Tomb at 152 BPM. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And last but not least, gotta have reverbs on the mix. So uh, the first H reverb is the room reverb. Get that put in there. Uh, and then get the hall reverb set up. Same deal. And then I'll kind of preemptively drop the instrumental to negative eight. This is kind of just from my experience using pre-mixed beats that are pretty loud, kind of just fill out the full soundscape. I just find that negative eight gives you a good starting point. I'm gonna scroll back down to our vocal track, pop open a take lane, arm it for recording, um, and we're good as far as getting this project set up. Let's get our instrumental into the project. Let's get Dominic Fike, Three Nights Audio. I think I'll just do the main audio right here. And then we're gonna jump over to the sponsor of this video, Ease US Vocal Remover. And we got this AI powered vocal remover. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Online site links, you already know what to do. We got that link to the audio. And just wait and let the vocal remover do its magic. While we wait on that, we can scroll down and look at what this online service offers. You really just upload audio files, it performs its AI algorithmic magic and gives you access to the individual layers that make up the audio. So think vocals, instrumentation. Uh, in our case, obviously we're gonna be pulling the instrumental of the song. And as you'll see in a sec, Vocal Remover from EasyUS actually does a really impressive job at cleanly uh, separating the individual layers of audio, better than I've seen with any other software, especially a fully online tool uh, and free at that. Yeah, so that's real impressive. Uh, they also got like a, a formal uh, features list you can look at right here. Uh, but that really should give you an idea as to what Vocal Remover from EasyUS is capable of. 100% free, which is pretty cool. And let's take a look at what we got for our cover. Cool, let's uh, download this instrumental and get that pulled into Cakewalk. Bop. So let's get into recording. I'm basically gonna do a whole bunch of takes for each section of the song. So a few for the hook, a few for each of the verses. And then once I feel like I got the best out of each of those performances, like there's a portion of each performance that's as good as possible, I'm gonna take all those best parts together in a process called comping and essentially create a Frankenstein take of all the best parts that we can use to actually mix things and get the cover to its final form. So, let's get to recording. Yeah. Three nights at the motel under street lights in the city of Palms. Call me what you want, what you want if you want. And you can call me names if you call me up. Three nights at the motel under street lights in the city of Palms. Call me what you want, where you want, if you want. And you can call me names if you call me up. 
Feel like the least of all your problems. You can't reach me if you want to stay out tonight. Stay out tonight. Yeah, so it's a rinse and repeat type deal. Doing a bunch of recordings and then just selecting the best parts, like I explained previously. Sometimes I'll do every single recording possible, from the verses to the hook to the ad libs and background vocals, uh, and then come back in and do the comping. Today I've kind of been doing it as I record. So I did all the hooks just now. I'm done with that. Um, and I selected like the best parts. It was really just like three splits, so three different sections uh, to get us to a final comped hook. Um, but yeah, I've been doing it as I go, as opposed to getting in every single recording and putting away the mic and sitting down to specifically do some comping. But yeah, it's totally up to you, your specific preference as to how you want to do things. And I don't know, just felt like I wanted to kind of uh, split things up and connect the dots when it comes to the best parts of these vocals as I actually do the recording for this specific project. Here's what the project's looking right now as a bare bones but satisfactory finished song. Got the instrumental up top muted because I'm actually recording using one of these uh, take lanes because uh, it's a good way to get quality audio even though I'm obviously not doing an actual performance or vocal take for the cover song. Um, but yeah, got the instrumental muted, the comped vocal. Got one, two, three, four, five individual sections. Two of them on the same lane, which is fine, as long as they're not overlapping left and right, which should be at the same time. But yeah, you can see what a finished, very basic, very rudimentary comp looks like. Yeah, so it looks like I can actually open a whole nother project while still recording, so you can hear what I'm saying. So uh, yeah, this is a, a song of mine that I'm working on. You can see all these different sections of the song. This one's actually finished with the exception of the ad libs. And literally jumping into verse one right here, you can see a whole lot of takes, a whole lot of splits and jumps between different portions. But this sounds really good because of that attention to detail. Um, got little notes here on the sides. You can see kind of keeping track of the characteristics of these takes and then same for all the different sections. And the reason I even opened this project in the first place, closing back out of that, getting back to the actual project. Well, I guess I can't scroll back because of recording, but I was just showing you what it looks like when you do a bunch of takes and combine those to get something that sounds pretty close to perfect. Three nights at the motel under street lights in the city of Ponce. Call me what you want, what you want if you want. And you can call me names if you call me up Three nights at the motel Under street lights in the city of Palms Call me what you want, what you want if you want And you can call me names if you call me up Feel like the least of all your problems You can reach me if you wanna stay up tonight Stay up at night Alright, gear time. Let's run through the gear we're, we're using for this cover I record with the Rode NT1 mic, which runs down and goes to the AI1 interface. That connects to my computer. Uh, Rode actually sells these two as a bundle, which is great for getting started. That's uh, what I was doing at the time when I bought these, uh, getting into my first XLR audio equipment. And what I use to listen and monitor things while I record are these, the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pros. These are great all-round headphones for mixing with or just listening to yourself as you perform. That's what I do with these guys. Uh, I use my speakers or monitors behind me uh, to actually mix audio with, although I will, you know, pop these on sometimes for a little bit different perspective. But since I brought up those monitors, those are the Presonus Ares 3.5. Still some of the best monitors at this price to this day. And yeah, no complaints. I've done videos on those guys, in addition to this, plus the AI-1. The only thing I haven't really featured in its own video is the headphones, but I don't know. All you need to know is that they're great at the price, and uh, I find them very nice to listen to as I pop them on. Turn on the live monitoring on the AI-1 so I can listen to what the mic's hearing and go to town recording. That about wraps up the video. Hopefully you were able to follow along with my process of putting together a cover song from pulling the instrumental from the original song's audio to bringing that into Cakewalk and setting up a project for recording using my mixing kit and recording to actually get some vocals in there and finally comping to put together those vocals in a way that sound good for the final cover. Hopefully you feel the same way about this cover coming out pretty good and sounded decent. 
Uh, but that's all I got to say. Thanks for watching. Subscribe down below for more quality general tech and audio tech videos. And I'll see you later. Be nice at the motel, under street lights in the city.